Hey everyone, my name is Joe and welcome to part 18 of the Godot top-down shooter tutorial. In this one, we're going to finish up the UI that we started working on in the last video, and I'm going to show you how you can find fonts online to import into your Godot project so that you can get a nice crisp looking font like we have down here. With that, let's get started. So if I select our health bar, we're going to come uh, first you can choose whether this percent text appears. I don't really like it. I'm just going to turn it off. Um, and then there's some values here. Value is the actual, like, how much of your progress bar is filled in. Then you have min and max, how much it goes up, which is your step. So you can adjust these as needed, but the default setting is totally fine for us. You'll see if I uh, boom, bump this to 50, it'll be halfway filled. If I do 43, you know, a little less. So value is the property we're actually going to edit to change what's in our uh, progress bar. So let's go to custom styles because this is really what we care about here. And I'm going to add first a, uh, I'm going to, so when these aren't enabled, it's using Godot's default. But if I enable it, all of a sudden you'll see that, whoops. Oh, I, if I don't actually add anything, it'll just unenable it. So what I'm going to do is click here. And if we're trying to add our own style, there'll be a couple different options. Um, style box empty we're not going to use because just an empty um we don't want just a line and we don't have textures so we want to use a style box flat which is a really nice way um a built-in way to adjust styles just using basic flat colors and so i'm going to do the same for our background and so we want our foreground and foreground is going to be the actual fill color to be let's do like a maroonish to kind of represent health there and so then in our background, we can set our background color to just be black for now. Let's set our value to be 50 so that we can actually see the changes we're making. And so, cool, all of a sudden we have a little bar here. Actually looks not half bad, but it could be a lot better. It's kind of bland right now. So let's actually change our background color to be kind of a dark gray. And then what we can do is actually add a border um, to our background. So I'll open border, set the color to be black, and then we can set our border width to be one on each side. And so that's gonna be okay, but you'll see quickly there's a problem in that our border is only applied to our background and our foreground actually overwrites it. So that's kind of frustrating, but we can just do the same thing to our foreground here and add the same border we created here. So I'll set this to have a black border. This is our foreground style. So I'll add a black border there, set the border width to be one on each side, and boom. All of a sudden now we've got a pretty good looking bar, which is like nicely bordered. It actually like, it looks pretty good. Um, and it's super easy. So now we have a health bar that um, has color in it that can increase or decrease as we get hit. Uh, you can also like there's a lot of different things you can change with these style boxes You can add a shadow anti-aliasing you can make it a, a rounded border by having a corner radius We're not gonna mess with any of that. This is pretty much all we need right now But yeah, feel free to adjust this and change the style as you want um, That's totally fine You can also add custom fonts for the percent that appears if you want and then custom colors here for that font as well But for us all we're gonna do in this tutorial is just change the style so we've got our health bar done, which is awesome. Now we need to actually add our text for our reload, for our current ammo count and our max ammo count. And in order to do that, I'm gonna add a few more elements here. I'm gonna add three labels, which are just your generic text elements. Let me make sure our labels aren't childs of our health bar. So I'm going to say current ammo. I'm going to duplicate this. I'm just gonna say, ammo separator actually let me get rid of that let's use a um i'm going to get a, a v a v separator which is just pretty much what it sounds it's just a little separator node like it's basically a line that you can use to separate um different different areas and, and this is pretty much all we're going to use it for i'm just going to set this to be like a uh, I'll, I might do some editing of this style later, but I'm just gonna set this to be white and we'll figure it out from there. So let's do 30 and then I'll make another one and this is gonna be 30 and this is gonna be our max ammo. 
So basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna have a label that has our current ammo and we're gonna have a label that has our max ammo. And so our max ammo won't change, but every time we fire our current ammo will go down um, and then when we reload, it'll go back up to whatever our reload value is. So it'll just show the player how much ammo they have left. Okay, so we have our ammo now, but there's a couple problems. One is that the text is really small. It's hard to see. And one thing you could do is just scale the text, but you almost never want to do that because text does not scale well. Instead, what you want to do if you need a bigger font size is to actually use a larger font size, is to change the font size. Unfortunately, you can't do that directly from within a label. There's not a font size option. What you need to do is actually uh, add in a custom font, which is where you define font sizes. And so I'll show you how to do that right now. So in order to do that, we're actually going to need to grab uh, a font to use. And so here I'm on the Google font site, which is just like the best repository for, you know, free fonts or fonts of various licenses. So we're just going to grab a font here and I'll, I'll post the link to this in the description so you can just grab it there. Um, I think it's my developer background, but I'm just a sucker for mono fonts and console fonts. I just think they look cool and they're just like easier because they're all the same with every character. So we're just going to grab uh, Roboto Mono here, I think, and we're just going to download this. And what I'm going to do is just download the regular. Um, normally what I would do is actually download a lot of these and kind of switch in between like I'd have one italic, one semi-bold, one bold, etc. But really all you need to do is download the regular here, which is just the regular standard weight font. And then this will come with the true type font data, which will let you increase or decrease the font size. And so all we need to do is just download this one, hit select the style, um, download this family, just the regular 400. We'll add it to our game and then we can import it into Godot. So I'll show you how to do that right now. Okay, so back in Godot here, and you can see I added the Roboto Mono regular font to my assets directory. So I just downloaded it and I just dragged it right from my downloads folder into Godot. So super simple, and it gets imported automatically as a TTF file, which is a true type font. And this comes with all the data we need to just import it right into Godot. And so what I'm gonna do is keep this here, and then on our current ammo, I'm gonna come into our custom fonts, and I'm going to select new dynamic font. And when you're using a TTF, you wanna use dynamic font here. So I'll create a new dynamic font, then actually select the font here, and I drag in our font data, which is Roboto Mono Regular. And then you'll see it actually is using this custom font here. Now we want to bump the size up. So I'm gonna change this to be 32. I think that's good, it's pretty visible. And you can see when I'm at a good scale where the pixels aren't messed up, like it has high resolution, it looks good, and you can see it pretty clearly from far away. So let's actually make it a little bit bigger. Let's do 36. And here's the thing, I've created a resource here, a dynamic font resource, um, just for this label, but I'm gonna wanna use this in other places. And so what I'm gonna do, and this is a practice that I think is, this is generally what you're gonna do when you use custom fonts in your game, is I'm gonna save this resource by right clicking on it. I'll also just do this in, actually, let's do this in UI. And I'm gonna say, um, I'll just call it Roboto Mono, and this is 36. So we're saving um, a font resource of size 36, because remember this size is tied to this resource. And so if we want different font sizes, I'll usually duplicate this resource and then in that duplicate, change the size and then just use the correct sized resource wherever I need to in my game. So you can also do some other stuff like I can add, say I wanted to add a black outline um, to our font. We can do that. Actually, that looks, that looks kind of good. So we might, we might just keep that. Um, but yeah, you can also adjust the spacing and some other stuff, but anyway, it's super easy to add your own fonts into Godot and it looks a lot better than using the default font. So now that we've got our fancy mono font, I'm going to come into our max ammo label, open up our custom fonts here, and then just drag in our font resource and boom, just works. Look at how easy that is. Huh, <sighs> awesome. So a lot of talking, a lot of going over resource or uh, UI elements in Godot, but we're pretty much there as far as creating our heads up display. And you'll see if I come back to our main, um, that this is reflected in our actual uh, camera 
I'm, look, use this little, the default camera box here. So we still need to fix the spacing and get it to be where we want it to be. But automatically now, if I run our game, you'll see that we've got these elements that follow our camera and they look good. They look really good. So let's just fix the spacing on this to be where we want it to be. And then we'll end this video. Um, also, actually, one more important thing. I'm clicking right now, but I'm not firing. And I'll show you why that is, because you're probably seeing this in your own game if you're following along. The reason for that, and this is something I mentioned we'd come back to later, is because of our mouse properties on our UI elements. So I think this is one of the most confusing things for people that are new to Godot, is they're like, why can't I get my click handling to work? Why are my mouse... Um, my mouse hits or movements being registered and it is very confusing I think at the start it's not my favorite part of the UI system but it's just something you learn so if you open up any control elements mouse section there will be a filter option and there are three different things you can set it stop pass or ignore if you set it to ignore basically that element will ignore all mouse inputs that happen to it if you set it to pass it will theoretically pass it on to uh, either its parents or its children. I don't really remember, um, but it passes it on uh, theoretically. And then there's stop, which means that any mouse element gets handled and stopped by that element. To be honest, I almost never use pass. And in my mind, when I hear pass, I'm like, oh, it'll handle it, but move it on. But I think that's a known bug that it doesn't work like that, that pass actually also stops. Um, mouse inputs i think what it does is it lets you handle it but also pass it on to direct parents i'm not or children i'm not totally sure i just don't really use pass because it just never really works the way i think it it does so really i would just recommend um until it's been changed or maybe i'm just you know saying something wrong correct me in the comments if i am but i would recommend just using stop and ignore so with both of our elements here we don't want any mouse interaction, right? Like our health bar and our ammo, like the user can't click on them. So we want to ignore for all of these. And for most elements in Godot that are not containers, they will be ignored by default. So, or that's not, okay, I guess that's not always true. And buttons obviously will do stop because buttons should consume mouse input. But so for, for this V separator, we want to do ignore. Um, so we're just going to go through all these and set these to ignore. And you can do this um, in mass, I believe. So if I select all of these and set this to be ignore, it will ignore it. Um, and I think now if I look at the mouse, whoops, if I look at the mouse settings, it'll be ignore for all of these. And so the reason that our mouse uh, clicks weren't getting registered is really because of these containers, right? Our margin container takes up the entire screen but its default is set to stop. So basically when you click on anywhere in the screen, our margin container is gonna consume that mouse event, which is not what we want. We want it to ignore it. So now that we've set all of these to be ignore, uh, we should be able to click and fire again. And you can do a mix of these, right? Cause you're gonna want in your GUI sometimes elements that consume mouse events. So you can set those to be stop or pass as needed. Um, but here we don't need that yet. So we're gonna get rid of it. And now if I hit command B and run it, you'll see that I can click. And even if I click on our health bar, it'll still fire. So we've basically made it that no elements on our UI consume mouse events, which is exactly what we want. So cool, really good stuff. Hopefully that makes at least a little bit of sense about mouse events and why you might not be, your mouse events might not be working as you'd expect when you add a GUI element to your game. So now let's just figure, or uh, let's make our, our UI elements be positioned correctly and then we'll call it for this video. Okay, so if we look at our current and max ammo, um, also I'm gonna, I'm just gonna get rid of this V separator, that was dumb. I'm just gonna add another label. Uh, actually, let's just duplicate our current ammo. And I'm just gonna set this to be space slash space, just so we get a nice little separator like that. And that'll be perfectly fine, I'll say. Ammo separator, okay. Anyway, thanks for bearing through that, that was bugging me. So we what we want is two things we want our health bar to be kind of more centered or moved down and we want our ammo to be pushed to the right side um, and so we're going to do that we're going to use a different method for both those things so for our health bar i'm actually going to add a center container and what a center container does is it centers all of its elements vertically and horizontally so if i drag our health bar into it we'll see that it centers it perfectly 
in the middle of its area and it's taking up the full height and it's just taking up the width it needs. So this makes our health bar look a lot better. It's a little bit closer to the bottom of the screen. Now we need a way to push our current ammo or our ammo stuff all the way to the right side. And so what I'm gonna do is actually add another uh, H-Box. Oh my gosh, I almost forgot again. Here, and I'm gonna drag all of these as children of our H-Box. And I'm gonna call this ammo section. So you'll notice that I've nested two of the same directional boxes here. And that's totally fine. Godot is really good about knowing how to handle um, any layout you give it, which is something I love about it. And so what we can do here is actually set our size flag. So our, our currently our center container with our ammo, I'll actually, or our health, I'll call this health section to be consistent. Um, currently our health section is taking up this width here, which I think is good. That's pretty much the width we want it to take. And then our ammo section here, um, normally we might have other stuff in the middle or we might have another placeholder, but for now, as just kind of a little cheaty way to get it where we want it to be, we can set our ammo section to expand the whole width. And then we can set its alignment to actually be the end. So it starts at the end instead of at the beginning. So again, it's just like, there are so many ways to get what you need with Godot's layout engine, which is why I love it. And then later on, if we added something to the middle, we would just add another element here. Um, so for example, say we added that um, base tracker I was talking about. Well, we could add that here. We could set it to be expand. And our ammo section, we could just reset this and not set it to be expand, and it would just work. Um, so it's once you're familiar with Godot's layout engine, super easy to get what you need done. So all that to say, I think we've got our basic heads up display complete. And the cool thing is that once we start our game here, you'll notice that it's there and it looks good. And oh no, oh shoot, I forgot to, all right, hold on, spoke too soon. I forgot to change our, since we added new elements, I forgot to change our mouse, um, our mouse flags. Okay, perfect. Okay, now if we start it, I should be able to fire by clicking on anything here. And look at that, it's like a really nice, simple display that looks good. And the best part, another reason why I love using box containers with Godot, is that it's very responsive. So if we scale our game, it still looks good, even though our individual pixels do not. So our UI scales, it looks good, it matches the screen display. Um, you could do some smarter scaling with it if you needed, but it just comes for free. So anyway, I think that's gonna be it guys. Long video, hope this has been super helpful and a good introduction to the UI system in Godot. As always, let me know if you have any questions and in the next video, we will go over actually connecting this to our game so that our health bar and our ammo change as our player gets hit or fires their weapon. Thanks for watching guys. Please make sure to like and subscribe if this has been helpful to you and I'll see you in the next video.